<coughs> Hello, welcome back to Goodnight Jemmy. We're continuing where we left off of going into the mirror world and figuring out how we can solve whatever issues come our way and hopefully get a happy ending at the end of it. So let's get right back into it. How do I... how do I control it? Oh, here we go. If things get tough and you can always leave and come back. If things get tough, you can always leave and come back. Oh! Hey! Oh! No, no. I, I thought I had it. Or wait, no. It's a puzzle, rather. Oh, okay. It's just trial and error. Okay. Never mind. I thought it was just like I needed it to move in a mirror reflection. So it had to stand on one while I had to stand on the other. And that's not the case. Okay, I apparently pushed the mannequin away. Okay. So it's going to be one of those pushing things. Wait, what? What? You can't... Okay, I can't fuck this up, so let's see. I would push that... No, I would... Uh, this. Which one is the right one? And for this one... Now, which one is first? Which one is second? I don't know how this is supposed to be, you know, fucking hard, but... Of course, my random use of profanity is going to be as... Um, great as ever. Okay, so it's top left, top right. Whoops, I didn't mean to shove ya. Top left, top right, bottom left. So it's sort of a Z. Whoops. Thank god, that's fixable. Thank God. Don't want to accidentally push them and block a fucking button and have to re-stew it all. That would suck. That would really suck. Bam. Hi. Hello, you. Who are you? Hey, good work. Head down to get out of here. What, what if I go up? Hey, I said go the other way, but I guess do what you want. It's not like there's anything over there anyways. Hmm. Actually put a script for if I actually didn't do what it wanted and went the opposite direction. Even though it proved to uh, do absolutely nothing, but hey! Incredible! That's Queen Lily! He would ask for an autograph, but Lily is busy hanging out with that jellyfish. What a cool gal, though. Sure? Lily noticed you! Well, hello there, stranger. How are you doing? I bet you are pleased to be graced by my such beauty. Not everyone gets such an opportunity. What's that? An autograph? Well, sure. She pulls the marker and signs your mask. There you are. Anything for a fan, darling. You feel conflicted about having a signature on your face. Knowing that it will most definitely smear off in the immediate future, you, you give your thanks and venture on. Take care of yourself, hon. After bidding your adieu, Lily resumes hanging out with her jellyfish pal. Okay. A small girl with a peculiar mask. It appears to be grinning. Before you can speak with her, she vanishes. But is she really gone? Apparently she is. Um... Hello? We have succumbed to a new power over our lens. The beast of faces and flesh has created confusion and turmoil in these parts. Many of the creatures are being ordered to wear masks and give up parts of their identity. I used to be known for doing well in sports and physical activities, yet the new beast in charge has ended those. That is to say, we have to live a life of conformity and similarity unless we want to anger the beast. I could bring up politics and how that really <laughs> makes it sound like politics. It's either you're with the majority or you're a bad person sort of thing. But I will not get into politics, not today. <laughs> We have succumbed. Oh, no, he only has one thing to say. Okay. Hey, you're you're here. A small girl with a peculiar mask. It looks like a demon of some kind. If we can speak with her, she vanishes again. The fingers twitch and pulsate upon your examination. The creature looks uncomfortable being looked at by you. I'm sorry about that. I'm not objectifying you or anything. I'm just you know, staring. I like your fingers. A small girl in a mask. A rabbit? Before you can ask her about yourself, herself, she vanishes. How do I get to that girl up there? There's a hole in the portrait. No. 
it's probably to the boss, but I'm going to leave that to the last moment. Uh, is that a mannequin with boobs and testicles? By the way, um, I, I, it looks like it. Small girl wearing a mask. You are not quite sure what the mask is trying to convey. Before you can ask her about herself, she vanishes. Seems like a reoccurring thing. Blank mask. Why are you there? Mar Why are there no markings on her mask? Secret. Do you want to know a secret? None of us have ever seen our own faces. We're made to wear these masks out in the open. At all times, no exceptions. Do you want to know why? Well, we have to hide what is behind our masks. And the markings? It signifies what we are hiding. The girl lifts her mask up ever so slightly for only a moment before disappearing. You stand there for a moment staring at the spot where the girl once stood. All you can think about is the lack of features you saw behind the mask. Well, I mean, that could be about... I mean, the social understanding, people, again, when you go outside, you're not really yourself, you're wearing a mask of what society, you want society to see. It's basically, um, oh shit, what is it? Oh, um, 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 role theory? I think it's role theory. Or basically, role theory is in that every human plays real life like it's an act on a play. We're all playing our characters, and all our existence is us just simply portraying ourselves like an actor or an actress would in a movie or in a play. And our character is our own creation, but it obviously is a mask, because who you play on the outside or to your friends or to even family may not be exactly the same as who you are inside. Whatever your mask is of what you created and what you think is acceptable by society standards and the informal norms presented in your culture. So with these masks, it'd be what they have created, what sort of hint of who they are, but is much more socially uh, appropriated, you could say. A small girl with a peculiar mask. It resembles an alien? Before you can speak with her, she vanishes. Alright, so we got the one left over at the upper right area that we have not gone to. I'm not sure what the whole Lily thing is. Some kind of... She's the only one without a mask or without any comfortability. She'd be some form of, I'm assuming, narcissism. While everyone else is sort of afraid to show their true selves. And if she, Lily, shows her true self, it's simply, I don't know, narcissistic. A small girl with a peculiar mask that looks like a skull. Before you can speak, she vanishes. Alright. And let's get to the boss and see what... Well, what, what it's about. And if it can be overcome. It is... Huh. Is someone there? Upon entering the beast space, the fragrance of gum and meat waft the air. It's gum and meat. I'm guessing this is all about identity and identity politics and such. The beast notices you looking at the surrounding space. What is your purpose here? Who are you, really? What am I? What do you think? What do you think of me? Eh, I identity. So this is all about identity and public perception of what you are, what you mold yourself to be. And the demon continues to utter questions into the void. What will you do? <sighs> Indifference wouldn't be the right answer, in my opinion. Introduction doesn't sound like it'd be a bad thing. I mean, just introduce yourself. You listen to the questions the beast is saying, carefully. What am I doing? What is the point? What am I? The demon is having trouble coping with the harsh realities of life and their place in the world. I feel like I'm not even here. This doesn't feel real. You walk closer to the floating creature and try to get more their attention to make them feel grounded once more. I'm scared I will never figure things out. You tell them that they are capable of being whoever they want. It is all up to them. Their worries are completely understandable, and yet, who they are is something that they must distinguish on their own. And that will come with time and experience. You then begin introducing yourself to them. You've been through so much, and while you still aren't sure of your own circumstances, you want to keep advancing into the future. You want to find yourself. And right now, you want to try to learn about the demon to make a connection and hear their worries fully. You want to learn about them, 
and in turn possibly learn something about yourself. The beast pulls away from their circular thoughts and looks down at you, faces revolving and arms twitching. You continue on stating how the opinions of others are generally seen as the most important, and yet what is really important is who you want to be. One's identity and feelings are up to themselves. Sharing things about yourself is fine and all, but at the end of the day, at the end of all of it, you only have yourself. And there will be times when others won't agree with who you are or what you do or believe in, but sometimes you'll find there are those who don't mind those sort of details. They will want to be around you, they will want to stay by your side, regardless of your faults or triumphs. And that is something to look forward to. The demon looks less tense, as if your thoughts have cleared their head a bit. I have always had trouble talking about myself. I have always worried. If I was someone others would befriend, what if there was a piece of me that was bad? Or something that could not be fathomed? An incomprehensible fragment. An unlikable trait or behavior. The beast begins to move about restlessly once more, as if stuck in their worries and thoughts. You stand closer to the beast and ask if they have any dreams or something they really want to do. The demon pauses their movements and reflects on this question. I sometimes think about making things. I wouldn't mind having a bakery. Making bread and sweets. Maybe working with someone I could call friend. I never really gave thought to it. It was just a silly idea. You tell the demon that it is something to strive for. As long as they truly want to do it and put their heart into it, then it is some not a silly dream. And who they want to be or what they want to do is not a problem at all either. Their feelings and happiness are valid and important. The beast looks at their own hands. Do you really think I could make something like that happen? You give them a few approving pats on the arm. Alright, I'm going to try my best. I'm going to blaze my own trail, make my own way in life. Thank you for helping me clear my thoughts up. It feels good to have some reassurance. I hope to meet you again one day. The demon bows slightly at you before sending you away. You hear voices echoing in the distance. The beast of faces and flesh is out in the open again. Have you heard? They're taken up bacon. They've taken up bacon. I heard they make a mean cheesecake. Sounds yummy. Alright. Well, for something that begins with a lot of depression, and at least, for any of you at least, that are also in a rut of problems, turmoil, and depression, at least everything seems to have a happy ending. And some interesting violin music. I was about to say, is that happy music? And it's gone. <laughs> so, hopefully this game is intriguing to you. I might have to cut it in parts of each level has its own thing, because clearly that second one take, took a long time, and I don't want to have 20-minute episodes, so if you, I cut it of one level per, and that'll total to, I guess, a total of six or seven episodes. I think that should be fine. I want them to be bite-sized, but each level seems to be effective and talk about its own problem or self-reflective issues and it's always good to get into that and talk about that and hopefully without me ranting in every single episode but hey at the very least i would extend it to make it so i go over the 10 minute mark but it didn't go away that's gonna be the end of this episode and possibly two episodes i'll have to see how the editing goes but i hope you enjoyed if you did please leave a like comment hit that subscribe button and subscribe button. until the next time the tents are closed up. I can't find my way in there and be protected. So I'm going to hide in the house. Oh no. It's the killer's notes left behind. The notes read how he's going to kill me. Oh god! No! No! No!